Hi, my name is Shauna Shane and I'm going to show you how to do a proportional grid from a reference to a work of art that would be exactly the same shape or proportion. I use a grid in my drawing classes and my painting classes as a tool to train my students. I have found that it really helps to be able to see negative and positive shapes at will. Now, I don't use a grid in my own work and I don't recommend it forever, but it is a very good way to learn how to see in a new way. The most important thing is that the reference and the final are exactly the same proportion. So this is how we get there. If I have, say, a drawing, let's put a drawing here, and let's say we're talking about a face. And so we have now a shape on this side and a shape, this is the negative shape here. And this is the other negative shape here, which by the way, they're not the same, which means that this is a little more interesting than if we have a portrait with a face right in the middle and the shoulders with equally shaped negative shapes. That's why paintings sometimes or drawings don't succeed is when they're centered and everything around them is the same, that doesn't work compositionally. So we're looking for different shapes, but it, here's, here's my shape here. And if I go onto something that's, say, a little bit more square instead of a vertical rectangle, and I use this shape, and I, there it is, and I can say, okay, there's that shape, it comes down straight, comes like that, comes close there. Okay, now I have on the other side, I'm gonna go to here and come here and go like this. Well, obviously, I, if I put a person in here, it's going to be just a little bit different. So obviously you have to go from this to exactly the same shape in order to make this work. And I have found that I can't just figure that out by just looking at it. I'm, I'm never correct and I've been doing it for 40 years. And so you have to make sure that it's correct, exactly correct in order to use negative and positive shapes. So the way we would do that is let's say I'm going to be using this photograph. It's very important that when you put your reference on your right angle, I usually make a ruler width right angle border so that I'm not working clear to the edge. It's really important that that be a nice square 90 degree angle at the and that your reference is cut exactly to 90 degrees. All of this depends on clean cuts. So in order to find the proportion is what I want to do is just go from the bottom left corner to the top right and another consideration is that it can't have a border around it. Keeping it very square. Right on up. And then taking my reference out, I can complete that line on my project. This should be done in a marker, even if it's on a canvas or a canvas board or whatever you're working on, because you wanna be able to see this through the whole project. 
So that after we have this, I can then say, okay, it can be at any place. So let's say I'll use my square as a good example of if I use the length of the square or the triangle, excuse me, then I can um, say, okay, let's put it right there. And if I make it that tall, I want to make sure it's definitely hitting the bottom here. So I can, if I make it that tall, then that's where I cross, that's where I cross right there. So that's absolutely where the other, the top has to be on that line, right at that point, because it's on the diagonal. That's the only choice we have. It has to be on the diagonal to be the same shape as the original. So now that's, that's my proportion. And sometimes when I look at it, it's like, oh, it doesn't look right. But I know it is because it fits on that diagonal. And so it is the same proportion. And that's why I never trust my estimation. It, it never works. I have to actually do that diagonal. And that's your first step is always a diagonal from the bottom left to the top right. You can't start by any of these lines. You have to start by the diagonal from the original reference to your artwork. And so now we have another diagonal placed and that gives us our center two diagonals and you end up with the center. So I can use that center and go across horizontally and then vertically, which will give me four sections or quadrants. And now I can go ahead and put in my vertical Now I have four shapes, but I want to take it one more step and put the, the diamond shape or find my four new centers. And after I find four new centers in the four quadrants, I'm going to put two horizontals and two verticals through the new centers. It's easy to forget one or the other of these lines. So you must remember after you have the diamond shape, then you have to have two horizontals. One. and then two verticals right through the centers of these quadrants. One, two, and that gives me the same number of spaces and shapes that I have in my original. And then in order to go from here, I'm actually going to flip it in order to see, instead of trees and ferns, if I turn it upside down, I'm gonna see a shape of water I'm going to see a shape of light, a shape of dark, another shape of light. It's so much easier to see shapes when you have no recognition or no labeling or no identification. It just is easier for your brain to see darks and lights, which is what we really are looking for. 
So let's say I'm gonna um, do a charcoal kind of, so I can fill this in, uh, can't keep working in pen. So here's a nice little shape starting about there, kind of here it goes about here. And then I notice that that crosses this diagonal a little bit past half. So that would be there and that's a little bit past half, so I'm okay. I come over here and it's looks like it's about dead center on this vertical. So I'm gonna hit a mark there. And so that says that this goes here. And in order to see where that goes to, look at that, there's a little shape right there. So I'm gonna say, okay, that goes from here, kind of comes up a little bit and over. And now I'll tell myself that all of this, all the way up to this point right here is darker than this part. So I'll just go ahead and darken that in using only a directional downstroke, kind of an even, and then that way I can blend that. I don't do this because that ends up being doubled up dark. On, I, I've got into the habit of only using one direction, a downstroke, blends really nice. So when I do that, when I blend it, whether, whether it would be oil paint or pastel or whatever your medium is, if you make that shape, not just a bunch of scritchy, scratchy lines, but fill it in as a shape, then you can, then you can compare and say, does this shape, does this edge match that what you're seeing? And so now it goes here, and say, okay, here's a little piece, comes up like a point, comes a little bit there. There's another little point, and let's see. Then this part here is darker. Right here comes to a point, goes like that, maybe like this. So now I'm gonna fill this in, that's pretty much dark. Fill this in, that's pretty much dark. And then we have a couple sh smaller shapes, but that's the idea. This part's a little bit darker. This part, these got some things in here that a little bit darker here. And that's how we end up um, finding what we need. This is not perfectly light. And this is a little bit darker. So that's how I would continue to develop my shapes. And if I look at this piece, then I can go to the other side of this line and see that piece. And on we go. And that's the idea. I can just... Let's do that piece of water, because that comes from here, goes here, comes like this. Where does that come on that line? Really close to half, a little bit below half. So let's say on that diagonal, a little bit below half. So we can go about here. That means that I was a little bit too low on that first one. And then so all of this gets filled in. And then it goes like like here, and then all of this gets filled in, because even this part, this little piece of light, if I squint, it's still part of this dark area, so that's really important to, to think about. Then we have this piece of purple coming that way, and on we go. So pretty soon I have the shape of the purple or dark, and and blend that in and then I can compare that shape as a whole but each piece gets compared so am I correct and if I am not correct then I change it so then we have this part right here it's a little bit darker and look at how that comes right to that point fills it in not, no problem comes to like an angle and pretty soon you have yourself really interesting look at that little tiny point almost to that little tiny point little sliver and so that goes like that blend it and then this part is even darker and if i don't stop i'll be doing this all day because i enjoy this like 
That's a reason I'm an artist, is because I love this part. That's all. This is all one, one whole dark. It's like it doesn't really have an edge. From here to here, when I squint, I can't see it. And then I'll blend it. And then just on the other side, it gets just a little bit darker and a little bit darker. And then by the time we're done with this shape, And then we have on this side, this shape. Pretty soon, even though part of the tree, there, I kind of made a mistake and called it a tree. I'm supposed to be just trying, I like to challenge myself not to say any identifying words. Just say that's this shape, that shape. It's hard to, to uh, explain explain or de describe in a video without using the names though. So I have to be a little bit gentle with myself on that. So here we have, and by the time we get up here with the tree getting a little darker than what's around it, it's going to be, all of this is filled in with at least a tone. Nothing in this area that's got, it's pure light. So. I'm safe in saying all of it is at least that dark. And then this part gets a little bit darker. And then this part gets a little bit, nothing really light there. And then this part, look at that little tiny shape right there. That's a dark, this is a dark, about a seven. And then this stays and all of a sudden we see the tree all the way up, uh, just from what I've done with these shapes so far. This is gonna be a little bit darker. This is gonna be a little bit darker. And that's how you develop this, using shapes. Oh, we have to stop. I can't do this all day. Um, the reason I want to not call things by name. I want to think of it as a shape. It's because when you have, say, what we think of as a person, we'll start with an outline, and then we have what we think of as this is the shape of eye, and we have kind of a an idea that there's, and then we have eyelashes, and then we have another eye with eyelashes and this is what we've learned in school and we have this nose that comes down and we have a couple of nose holes and then we have a mouth shape like a little uh, bow thing and then we have a neck that comes down and we have shoulders like this okay so that's what we have learned about what a face is. Sometimes it even gets a little bit so it, the, the head's about here and sometimes the side view becomes this and then we have a nose and then we come back and you've all seen this. And then we have a chin and we have a neck and so that ends up being the eye that's what we have learned a lot of times. I see that over and over, even in sophisticated drawings. Okay, so, but if we look at shadow and light instead, I'm gonna say, let's say the light is gonna come from this direction. And so instead of doing an outline at all, I'm gonna try to look at the shape of the shadow and the whole shadow shape might be something like eye socket, shadow underneath the nose, shadow top lip, shadow underneath the bottom lip, shadow underneath the neck, which is going to be like that and then 
looking at the negative shape, I can see that it's where this comes in on the jaw and the whole neck is a little bit darker. And I can see that that comes in like this. And so shadow underneath the nose, shadow top lip, and a little bit of a shadow here, but not as much because it's the light's coming from there. We have a little bit of a shadow where the hair comes the edge of the hair. So whatever is, that is doing, so let's say we've got quite a bit of Got lots of hair, so I'm going to turn get the neck a little bit smaller, get the jawline a little bit smaller. But um, I'm not looking at anything, so I'm kind of making this up a little bit. So we have shadow here that comes into the shadow of the eye socket, which is the shape of the bone structure. The eye socket is every everybody different on everybody, and so now we have shadow under the nose, and because you can see the difference distance between that and that, and how close that is, but the shadow, the shape between the eye socket shadow and the shadow of the nose, look at how close that is. So when you do this, it's gonna be way too long. When you see it as a shadow, and you develop the shadow on the side of the nose, and the side of the this, and the side of this, and pretty soon you've got a little bit more information and then you have the eye socket. Inside of the eye socket is the crease. And then we have the eye itself, which is darker. It's too small for me to work here, but, and then the top of the eye socket and the dark shadow in here, the darkest shadow is gonna be right in there. And then the eye and so without doing any lines at all, you know, you have developed a, something that has shadow shapes and that's so much faster and so much more usable. And here we have, if we do the background, I can say this is side of the, the hair it would be lighter and this side of the hair would be darker because again lights coming from this side this side of the neck lighter this side of the everything on the shadow side darker and everything shadow here shadow here They're coming around the corner. And so just by seeing shadow shapes, and again, I'm not as good at making things up as I am at looking at reference. Um, we have developed something without any use of line at all. It's all about the shape of the shadow, seeing, and on the light side, just a tiny little bit of a crease there, a little bit of a crease here, a little bit of a darker shadow here. Okay, and so that's how I would develop something looking only at where does this shape stop? And where that shape stops, that gives you the edge of the, the neck. Where this shape stops, gives you the beginning of the clavicle. Where this shape stops, it gives me the, um, where the muscle comes into the joining in the cl clavicle of this. Let's say that this 
comes a little bit longer, the shape, and then that shape, the top of that light shape, it is the bottom of the other shape, and that ends up giving you the edge of the shoulder. So it's like um, every shape's edge shares the edge with the actual object. So that is how it's really easy to develop something in terms of shadow and light instead of trying to start from an outline. That's just, just a quick little example of how everything on this side a little bit darker, everything on this side a little bit lighter because it's catching light. So that might be how you develop a drawing, although it might be a little bit easier if I had something to look at. Dark into dark. And if you're having, say, a shirt or a t shirt or something, make sure that you also understand that the, um, the light side of the clothes, there'll be shadow shapes here, there'll be pieces of light, but the lighter side is going to be always lighter than the, the shadow side that goes through the clothes through the t-shirt through the jeans through the sometimes we just kind of forget that the we'll do the face shadow but we won't do the shadow for the clothing do it for this demonstration. Thank you.